What do you mean by the term time domain specifications of a control system? Well, my name is Rishir Amju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering community where I make engineering easy for you. So, let us ask yourself that obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term time domain specifications of a control system? Well, let's find out. So, let us consider this as a particular control system. So, we must be able to tell this particular control system to have certain performance characteristics. How do we do that? So, for us to tell this particular control system what all performance characteristics we want this to have, that is where we use time domain specifications. Simply, time domain specifications are used for the purpose of specifying the performance characteristics that we need from a particular control system. That is simply what you refer to as time domain specifications. So, in order to understand these various time domain specifications, we need to plot the response diagram of a particular control system. So, for the purpose of plotting the response diagram, let us take the time response along the y-axis and the time along the x-axis. So now, if this is the 100% value that a particular control system is desired to obtain, so if this is 100% value, then when we turn on the control system, its response diagram would look somewhat like this. First, it would like start increasing, 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 and when it reaches here, it would now be something like this. So this is the response diagram of a particular control system. So now, first let us see what you refer to as the delay time. So now, delay time is simply referred to as the amount of time that is taken by this particular control system to reach 50% of its value. So here, if this is 100% value, then 50% value would be somewhere around here. So the amount of time that is taken by a particular control system to reach 50% of this particular maximum value is simply what you refer to as the delay time. Very simple concept, guys. So the now rise time is defined as the amount of time that is taken by a control system to reach from 0 to 100% of that particular value. That is, this much amount of time is simply what you refer to as the rise time of a particular control system. So, the TR is different for different cases of second order control system. That is, in the case of an underdamped control system, it is the amount of time that is required for a particular control system to reach from 0 to 100% value. But in the case of an overdamped control system, it is the amount of time taken to reach from 10% to 90% value. But in the case of a critically damped control system, it is the amount of time that is taken by a control system to reach from 5% to 95% of the maximum value. So this is the rise time for the three different types of second order control systems. That is for under damped, over damped and critically damped control systems. Next we have what you refer to as the peak time. It is very simple. It is as the name suggests. So peak time is defined as the amount of time that is taken by a control system to reach the peak value over here. So if this is the peak value, then the amount of time that is taken by a control system to reach the peak value is simply what you refer to as the peak time of a particular control system. So now say, let us assume that the response value of this particular control system at the peak value is say C of TP then the maximum overshoot MP is given as MP is equal to maximum value minus final value divided by the final value. So the final value is simply the response of this particular control system at infinite, that is C of infinite. So this is therefore given as MP is equal to C of TP minus c of infinite divided by c of infinite. So this is the value of the maximum overshoot. And finally we have what you refer to as the settling time. So in the case of a control system we have a certain allowable error. That is we can allow an error of around 2% to 5%. So the settling time is defined as the amount of time that is taken by a control system to first start from zero and settle at its resonance value within this particular allowable error. That is simply what you refer to as the settling time. So these thus are the various time domain specifications in the case of a second order control system. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it.
So these thus are simply what are referred to as the time domain specifications of a control system. As simple as that. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as the time domain specifications of a control system. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.